Hey YouTube, ready to see a reef update for 2016? Stay tuned. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching and uh, welcome to 2018. This is going to be an update on both of my reef tanks, starting off with a 125 gallon tank and then the 28 gallon bio cube. Um, but before I get started, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that if you're new to this channel or haven't subscribed, that if you do subscribe, you'll be able to see all my updates. Um, I do very regular updates on all my tanks. Uh, I keep saltwater fish, obviously, if you're watching this video, you know that. I keep freshwater cichlids and I keep freshwater shrimp as well. Um, so I do updates on my entire fish room um, very regularly. Also, if you're interested in buying Southern Delight fish food, I am a bulk retailer and I sell it in uh, bulk, meaning one pound bags. There are formulas available for saltwater fish and freshwater fish, any type of fish, big or small, I've got your food. My email address will be below if you want to try out some and would like to order, let me know. So we'll get started here with 125 gallon. Um, just kind of giving you a, a side shot from it right now. Um, everything's been going really good for the most part. Um, since my last video, I can't remember if I talked about it or not, but I lost both of my bigger tangs, the chocolate tang and the naso tang. But other than that, things are going good. Corals seem to be doing good. I'm getting my parameters back in check. Or not back in check, I never really had them as this was a tank that's, you know, it's, it's really only six months old after cycling probably five months old and so I'm just kind of dialing everything in and things seem to be going real well. I'll go ahead and kind of go through the livestock and let you know what's doing good, what's not doing so good and kind of go from there. Alright so we'll start over on the right side of the tank, the bigger of the two rock structures and I'll kind of show you what we've got going. Um, as you can see right in front of you there's a uh, a nice colony of uh, kind of green trumpet coral. It's doing well. New polyps are growing all the time. I'm really looking forward to the point when these two clusters uh, or two colonies kind of um, merge together and form one big colony. But these were frags initially from the colony I had over in my bio cube. So um, if, if you remember from when I fragged them and put them over here, they've grown quite a bit. So the Zoa garden over here, it's doing okay. Um, I've got this big, towards the bottom right of the screen, this big Zoa colony that I purchased from our local frag swap a few months back. It's doing good, but the polyps, a lot of the polyps are closed um, quite often, and I think a lot of that has to do with shrimp and uh, my Watchman Gobi, um, you know, crawling across it and stuff. Some of these smaller Zoa colonies, um, are doing okay. A um, few new polyps here and there. Um, the two towards, more towards the top of the screen are probably the two that are growing the best and the quickest at this point. The top of this rock structure overall is doing real well. You can see on the right I've got a, um, a red Monty and it's really had a lot of new growth lately. It's really grown quite a bit. In front of it there's a green Monty that's not growing quite as fast, but it was also a much smaller piece. Above it is a toadstool. The toadstool is doing fairly well. It kind of split um, into two, and the other one is a very small piece that's over on the other rock structure. I'll show you that in a few minutes. So this leather right here is doing phenomenal. It's growing real well. There's a lot of nice green polyp extensions. Next to it is the Duncan, and that's doing real well too. It's growing slow, but there's several new heads. I'm really looking forward to when that becomes a real nice big kind of ball colony in that area there um, in the rock it'll really fill it in nicely. You can see on the other side of the leather there's um, this green Monty that's really grown nicely. You can if you see the lines the growth lines kind of it's got probably a half inch of uh, new um, growth in about two months three months time. Behind it um, is a uh, the SPS coral, I forget what it's called at this point. It might be a, a type of a bird's nest, I'm not sure. 
but you can see it's doing real well. It's grown quite a bit since I've gotten it, and uh, you can see quite a bit of polyp, polyp extension on it. This area over here, um, there is a uh, another kind of branchy SPS type coral that's doing well, and then just to the left of it is this purple um, frog spawn that. If you've seen my last couple of updates, you've, you've heard me saying that it just hasn't been opening. Well, in the last couple of weeks, or maybe just the last week actually, it's really started opening quite a bit more. So I'm real happy with, uh, with hopefully what's in store with that. Then down below that, I've got some uh, different mushrooms. I'm gonna kind of make this, uh, I guess, like a mushroom garden, if you will. Um, I've got, well, first of all, I'm kind of below that frog spawn. You can see there's a green favia. Then there's some green mushrooms, red mushrooms, and different things mixed in there. All right, let's move on over to the smaller of the two rock structures. Um, there's quite a bit of action over on this side, a lot more soft corals that are moving in the, in the flow and things like that, so I'm really happy about that. We'll start with one thing that hasn't been going too well lately, and that is bubble coral. It isn't opening quite as much as it should, and I may be able to attribute that to um, not feeding it enough. I'm not one that typically target feeds corals, but from what I've been told, these bubble corals do need to be target fed like uh, some kind of fleshy meat like uh, mysis shrimp or you know some, something along those lines. So I'm going to work at starting to do that and hopefully this will recover because I'd hate to see this beautiful coral just uh, fade away to nothing. You can see the green octospawn on the, on the uh, kind of edge there is doing wonderful. I moved the uh, torch that was more towards the front of the rock structure over to that area where, where, where there's less flow and it's doing much better. It still is getting quite a bit of flow, but not to where it doesn't want to open up. And then in front of that is the uh, hammer coral that's doing exceptionally well also. It's been growing quite a bit. The a the acans in front of the hammer are doing real well. I want to add a few more into that bottom rock structure area and kind of make it an acan garden down there. I think that'll look real nice overall. Up on top you can see the rose bubble tip anemone that um, has pretty much taken its home on the back side of that rock. Luckily it's taken home to a spot that's um, up high enough where I'm seeing most of it. It hasn't done any walking in quite some time so hopefully it's gonna stay there. I'd be happy with that. I'd be more happy if it would have landed somewhere up front, front and center, but it just doesn't happen all the time with NEMS. So in front of that is another SPS coral that's doing real well. You can see some awesome polyp extension. Quite a few things in this shot. Um, frog spawn to the left is doing real well. Um, some encrusting type corals on the tops of the rocks are doing good. And then just to the right of the screen you'll see a little teeny leather. That's the piece I mentioned that broke off of the toadstool over there. And then towards the left back, um, just next to the NEM, is uh, another SPS coral that's doing real well. The green star polyps over in the corner here have almost completely um, covered the rock structure. I'm hoping by the next time I do an update I'll be able to tell you that it's completely covered and it should look really cool over there in the corner. As far as livestock goes, I've got um, the basic Nemo clowns and I've got um, the two Wyoming whites and then a pair of, not a, they're not a form pair, but um, a, two snowflakes. I talked about those in the last update and they are all doing well also. I've still got the yellow tang. He is way over in the corner right now. But back when I had the other tangs he got picked on a lot and his fins are a little bit nipped up. I don't know if they'll ever grow back or not. I've got three or four skunk shrimp in here that are doing well. I've got one fire shrimp and I've got a handful of peppermint shrimp in there as well. One thing that has not happened yet is none of the clownfish have hosted in this anemone or the anemone has not hosted any of the clownfish. I always get mixed up on 
what uh, what came first there, the chicken or the egg, if you will. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the bio cube. Things have been getting quite a bit better in this tank as well. Um, I seem to have lost the two peppermint shrimp and the cleaner shrimp that was in here. I thought I had that problem taken care of when I got rid of the um, strawberry crab and the pistol shrimp, but I don't know, in the last week or two, neither of those three have been located. I did notice on two separate occasions there was debris on the um, MP10 impeller, um, but it looked to me more like a molt, so it's possible maybe that they've molted and either were killed when they were molted and unprotected or that they've hidden since then. I'm not sure. It just seems like it would be too long for them to be hiding, but I'm not sure. I'm kind of new to the lives of how those types of cleaner shrimp and ornamental shrimp work with reef tanks. So we'll see. One thing I have noticed in the tank is now that the strawberry crab's gone, we've got bubble algae. So I may have to look into getting an emerald crab to take care of that. I've had those before and they did a great job. A little close up on my Wheeler's Goby. He's out front quite a bit more nowadays because the pistol shrimp's gone. So he's not in hiding and digging with him and working out uh, cave networks. I lost the last fire fish I had and so I went ahead and got this new one. He's been doing real good. Haven't had any problems. The clownfish are pretty much constantly hosting up in this anemone over on the right side. You can see they're kind of coming up from below, or one of them at least is right now. And um, But they typically are over to the side and hosting. Another look at one of the clownfish playing around in the NEM. Actually, they're both back there right now. They're just kind of real. They really enjoy. They spend most of their time back in there these days. This torch coral, I couldn't be happier with. It's been just beautiful. It's always open. It seems like it continues to grow. Um, it's just really been a joy to have right kind of front and center in my tank. The green star polyps are doing well. Um, I'm thinking about possibly moving them over to the 125, putting them in a separate kind of colony uh, um, so that there's another mound of green star polyp in there. It'll free up some more space to maybe put some things kind of in the sand in this front section, but I'm not quite sure yet. Behind the green star polyp, you'll see um, a green octospawn and then a colony of the green trumpet coral. It's where I got the stuff in my 125 from this colony. This colony has continued to grow as I've placed it in here um, or replaced it after I rescaped it. The Duncan wasn't doing real well um, after I rescaped the tank but now it's starting to bounce back and actually some new uh, polyps have even opened up. Got this leather at the top that's doing real well, and next to it is an SPS coral that's that's done really well. A lot of a lot of little green coral um, polyp extensions. You can see between them, right in the back, there's a, I think it's a bird's nest, another type of SPS coral, and then in the very back, there's a kind of a green encrusting coral. I forget what the name of that is. You can see the toadstool sticking up there, as well as another little um, nem. Now this nem in the front of it. I've had it for probably a year and it hardly ever would open up. It hid around the back all the time. And then after I put in these rose bubble tips, it kind of made its way up front and it's found a spot right at this top of this rock structure. And it's growing and opening up slowly a little bit more, you know, as the weeks pass. So at some point it might decide to take a walk and go somewhere else or whatever. But for right now it's just doing its thing and it looks kind of cool there at the tip of that rock structure. So we'll kind of take a look at what I was hoping to kind of make into kind of a Zoa garden, this whole left hand side of the tank. It's doing okay, there's a few Zoa colonies that seem to be growing well, like that orange one. And there's a couple Pally colonies, I keep saying this in every video I know, but the one that's kind of bland in color I'm going to remove, the, uh, I'm going to keep the one that's purple around the edges with kind of the orange ins orangish pinkish inside because I really enjoy that one. But uh, we're hoping to 
We're hoping to grow some more corals in this area. You can see some bubble algae in there as well. And uh, it would look really nice if that whole kind of end rock structure as it comes down would be uh, zoas and pallies. One last coral that I didn't talk about too is this uh, red monte up there. It's really grown quite a bit. You can see the edges are starting to curve up and it uh, hopefully will be doing some tabling soon. Well, YouTube, that's really all I've got for you this week. Hope you enjoyed the update. Stay tuned for future updates on all my different uh, types of fish tanks. Uh, again, make sure you subscribe. If you're looking for Southern Delight fish food, hit me up with the email below. Also, make sure you go over to Aquatic Support Systems on Facebook and give that page a like. That's my business page. And also the Aquatic Support Community on Facebook. It's a great group. Get involved with that as well. Thanks a lot and have a great day.